I am Cale Fisher. Uh, I'm a research assistant professor at the University of Utah and I work with uh, John Creasel and his lab to study the causes and the disease process of multiple sclerosis. So in my lab, Pre-to-Rear, our postdoc extracts actual brain tissue from MS patients and from control brains and we take the material that she extracts and we do a procedure called deep sequencing on that material. So we send that to um, a lab uh, at the Huntsman Cancer Institute here in Salt Lake City and they send us back hundreds of millions of um, DNA sequences from every sample. And we go through those sequences with a fine tooth comb and we look for possible signatures of uh, viruses like uh, herpes virus or measles virus or Epstein-Barr virus or all of the viruses that you've ever heard of and um, uh, a lot more viruses too. So right now there are about uh, 30,000 viruses that we know of and so we comb through those sequences and look for all of those. And we've done that for many years now for many samples and occasionally we see an uh, unusual virus um, and when we do we report that but we haven't found uh, you know Epstein-Barr virus or um, GBBC was a virus that we found uh, earlier in our work. We haven't seen those occurring over and over again in MS patients. Uh, so as we, as we progressed uh, in the work, we did see a signature which might be viral, uh, and it's a, a retroviral signature. And discovering a new retrovirus turns out to be very tricky. There are a lot of false reports of that in the uh, uh, in the literature, not just in MS, right, but in uh, uh, prostate cancer and uh, uh, chronic fatigue. There was a recent uh, dust-up where people thought they had a new retrovirus, but it, it wasn't real. So we were wanted to be very, very cautious. And the more we looked at the signature, the more it looked like these sequences which look retroviral are actually uh, part of the human genome they're human endogenous retroviruses. They're very, very common and they're very, very hard to study, partly because they're so common. They, um, there's more human endogenous retroviruses in your genome than there are uh, normal genes. And uh, so that just gives you some idea of, of how ubiquitous they are. But one thing that we found is that people with, who have demyelinating disease, whether it's caused from uh, herpes encephalitis or uh, measles or um, or if it's associated with MS they all have uh, elevated um, levels of these human endogenous retroviruses that we can detect in the brain samples um, so that combined with uh, some other current research in the field that shows that these uh, herbs are actually used by the immune system to uh, boost uh, immune function relates our efforts with um, other models of uh, MS pathogenesis that involve uh, autoimmunity. So it's really tying together this idea of viral signatures and human endogenous retroviruses and autoimmunity uh, together in sort of one unified way of looking at the disease process. So when we get the sequences back from the Huntsman Cancer Institute and we start going through them, we categorize them into, uh, into different classes. So there are uh, some which match a database that we have of all known viruses, and there are uh, others which match uh, uh, bacterial sequences. There are some which match known human genes, and then there are um, all the other ones, right? And uh, those can fall into uh, sort of combinations of things. Uh, let's see. So human endogenous retroviruses look viral, but they also look human. So that adds a extra complexity to the analysis, but uh, it turns out that that's where the interesting signature is. we do something called expression analysis, where we look and see how often 
we see the presence of uh, human endogenous retrovirus in a control sample, and then we check for all the control samples, and we get sort of an average uh, level that we expect in the undiseased samples, and we compare the MS samples to that average. And uh, that's the signature that we're currently working on, uh, that signature being that we see more curves in the MS samples and in the other demyelinating samples that aren't MS than we see in the healthy controls.